All right, this section is focusing a lot on position and velocity and just how an object or a particle changes at what rate. Uh, so what's going to happen is that we will have our original function and what we can consider our original function to be will always be our position function. So what can we find with a position function? Well, what we're going to focus on with a position function are usually the outputs, the Y value. If we're talking about an object moving in space, commonly we can find the height of an object, whether it be the max or the min. We can know how long an object has traveled and also how far I'm trying to walk too far away. Uh, so what's going to happen, especially in next chapter, is there's going to be more application problems. And in one problem, I might ask you, what was the maximum height of the object? What was the speed of the object when it reached its maximum height? At what point did it begin to accelerate from the maximum height? When did it stop accelerating? And then how long did it take to hit the ground? Those questions just bounce between the position function, the velocity function, as well as the acceleration function. So we have to know which function we're using depending on what the question is asking us. So if it's asking us for the height or how far or the distance it's traveled, things like that, those are the jobs of the position function. f prime of x. So the derivative of a position function. So that is the rate at which the position is changing. We know this to be our velocity. So the first derivative is going to be our velocity function. We can also say that velocity is the speed of an object with direction. So is it going up? Is it going down? And at what speed? Is it going forwards? Is it going backwards? Things like that. All right, just had to bring the chat back up. So how fast a particle or an object is moving. Now it should be noted and you'd learn this in any um, physics class or in some of your science classes. Uh, if you take the absolute value of velocity, that equals speed. So if I wanted the speed of an object and your velocity was negative 64 feet per second, then it would be 64 feet per second. So speed is the absolute value of velocity. So I guess we can go 
commonly used uh, if you're driving in a car and you're going um, up north, maybe you average 45 miles per hour, and then you come back down and you average 50 miles per hour. Technically, you'd be moving away from your location, so your velocity would have been 45 miles per hour. And then when you're moving back to your starting location, you would have been going negative 50 feet per second would be your velocity. So when you return to your starting point, you're having a negative velocity. When you're moving away from it, then you're having that positive velocity. But it just translates to speed. The second derivative or F double prime of X is going to be our acceleration. So the acceleration is the rate at which our velocity is changing. So if we're standing still, and then our velocity is increasing, at what rate is that velocity increasing? Well, the velocity increases at the rate of the acceleration. Now here's where acceleration can be a little tricky, but I'll write that down first. So it's the rate at which velocity changes. We may consider an acceleration or a deceleration. So that'd be slowing down. We would have positive accelerations and negative accelerations. So a negative acceleration is a I'm gonna make up this spelling. I don't know if that's how you spell deceleration. I don't even know if deceleration is a word now that I think about it. I just know that that's what I have said to accelerate. Yeah, oh, so there's only one C. Yeah, there we go. I do math, all right. Acceleration. Only one C. And the definition is a reduction in speed or rate. So it's actually the reduction of the rate of speed. So a negative acceleration is going to be our deceleration. This can also get confusing because we can also slow down our acceleration, but that wouldn't be decelerating. So if you are accelerating at a slower rate versus a faster rate, or if you are slowing down. So uh, to try to clarify that, if you start to accelerate and you're still accelerating, but not as fast of a rate, that would be a positive acceleration. Now, if you're slowing down, you would have a negative acceleration and then you could have a higher or a lower negative acceleration. So there's layers of this. The third derivative, and this will be the last layer of things. In fact, we often don't talk about this, but it is a, a jerk in the motion. So if you are going in one direction and then all of a sudden you just change the direction. So think of like whiplash, that that is like a jerk in your motion. That would be the third derivative. That is the rate at which acceleration is changing. We don't often talk about jerks, but it is just a thing. Now it's actually these jerking motions and the 
uh, the derivatives of position that people think uh, why motion sickness exists and seasickness exists. It's because what happens if you are reading a book or if you're in the back seat and you are not focused on the road and you are not aware of the driver accelerating and decelerating as they drive, what's happening is your brain's equilibrium is being thrown off and that causes the nausea because the brain doesn't know what's going on. If you are driving, it's very rare. In fact, I've never heard of a driver having motion sickness. That's because the brain is aware of what the foot is doing. So as you are accelerating and decelerating, your brain is fine with that. So you don't get sick. You only get sick when you are reading a book or looking at your phone or doing something like that and not paying attention to how subconsciously, not subconsciously, but how slightly the car is accelerating or decelerating. Same thing with uh, on a boat, anyone can get seasick because no one has a focal point and no one knows what the sea is doing to the boat. So it's hard for the brain to comprehend the waves. So for those that get seasick, uh, those are usually ones that uh, the brain just has a harder time of making adjustments. Other people, after a few days, the brain starts to understand and overcomes it. Some people never get over it. Uh, so that whole seasickness and motion sickness can be explained through derivatives and calculus. All right, just checking the notes, see if anyone has said anything and we seem to be okay. All right, so now for a live action example, I have a car that is going to accelerate to a speed and then it's gonna slow down to a stop and it's gonna take 10 seconds for it to do that. So we have a car, it speeds up, it slows down and then it comes to a stop. Pretty simple, this happened over 10 seconds. We're gonna pretend that that was just 10 seconds, but what this car just did from going from here, speeding up, getting to a speed, and then slowing down to a stop, we can get a position function, we can get a velocity function, we can get an acceleration function. Uh, so let's talk about what those would look like. So first, the position function. So this is going to be my time. And this is going to be my distance. Now I'm going to start at zero time and zero distance. And what's going to happen is that as this car accelerates, its distance begins to increase. And then it reaches its top speed. And then the amount that it's traveling, it now takes longer to get there. So this is at zero and this is at 10. So as the car is traveling, it starts off with zero distance and it finishes at however far this car is. Um, so we'll say that it traveled in 10 seconds, I don't know, 50 feet, whatever it might be. So once it's here, that is its total distance that it traveled. When it was at its top speed right here, just checking the chat, it was having its fastest velocity, which would have been found right there. So it was accelerating the rate at which it was accelerating peaks right here. And then it started to slow down its speed. 
And so that's why it curved off. So that is my function graph. Well, how about the derivative of this position graph? What would the derivative look like? Well, for this, my velocity started to accelerate. I reached a peak and then my velocity was going back down to zero. So my velocity is going to go up, 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 up. It's going to plateau. And then my velocity is gonna peak at this point and then it's gonna to start to decrease until I go back down to zero. So this is modeling the same thing, but this is modeling my velocity. So as I start to accelerate, my velocity is slowly increasing right here. It reaches a maximum velocity and then it starts to go down. What about the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is going to be increasing. And then as we get to that peak velocity, our acceleration will start to decrease. And so for the acceleration, that is going to be increasing it seemed like at a pretty constant rate, and then we're gonna switch and start to decrease. And so the acceleration is gonna become even simpler of a model. And since our velocity was still positive, I still have a positive acceleration. Notice how I have not gone into the negatives at all. I haven't had any negative velocities. I don't have any negative accelerations. I just have what's going on. And then it was at this point right here that the jerk occurred, that it went from accelerating, all of a sudden something changed and it started slowing down again. So this is just how we can incorporate the three different graphs together. So that is an example of a car driving for 10 seconds and the different functions that we can derive based off the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. All right, next up, we have just a random particle. This blue particle is going to move along this line. And what it's going to do is it's going to go to the five, go back to the zero, then the negative five, and then it's going to finish where it started. So it's going to the right, going to the left, all the way to the left, and then back to the middle. So what would be its position function for this? Now I'm kind of misleading you here. So maybe it make more sense if I did a coordinate grid. This can be the X, that can be the Y, uh, but at home or in person, uh, sketch what you think the position function would look like. So what is this particle doing and what would it be?
All right, so what I think it's doing is it's starting at zero. And as time has gone by, it first went up to the value of five. So assuming it's a constant rate, its position is gonna go up to five. And then it went back. There we go. Then it went back to zero. Then it went down to negative five. And then back to zero. So this is what the position graph could look like. It went down below when it went in the negatives and then it went back up. Now, what about the velocity of this function? So what are the speeds doing in terms of the particle? So again, take a moment and think this over. And what does the velocity look like when it's doing that motion? All right, so before I get into this derivative, keep in mind that for an object to stop by the laws of physics, it needs to slow down before it stops. It can't just be going at full speed and then just stop right away. That's not physically possible unless there is something that um, they go up against. So if you're in a dead sprint, and then you had to stop, you're not at your top velocity and then you go right to zero. Cars don't work that way, trains don't work that way, people don't work that way, particles don't work that way. So think about your velocity and you are going from zero to five and you had to stop. So when you stop and change direction, what's happening to your velocity? Well, it should be going back down to zero. So I'm starting off with a velocity of zero. I get to five and I have a velocity of zero. I get to negative five, I have a velocity of zero. And then back to zero, I have a velocity of zero. So I should be crossing this x-axis multiple times. So what I have is this particle, as it moves, it is accelerating at a certain rate and then it begins to decelerate and get to a velocity of zero. So it is going up and it has a velocity of zero. And now it's gonna go back to my location. So I have a negative velocity. So I am now going to go under to zero. And I am going to then start to slow down as I'm getting to negative five. So we can assume that at zero, we've reached my maximum velocity. And then I started to slow down. So I traveled here in um, a certain number of seconds. We'll say I went from zero to five in two seconds. Well, to go from five to negative five, that's gonna be over a span of four seconds. So that means I had more time to pick up speed, my velocity increased, and then I slowed down at negative five, back down to a velocity of zero. Now it's still a negative velocity because I'm going away from my location. And then I'm going back to zero 
So I'm going to accelerate and then be back down below. So this is what my function would look like if I was talking about the derivative of this particle moving along this line. I had a positive position and a negative position, and then I have a positive velocity, a negative velocity, and then I'm going back to my original spot, so then I'm back to a positive velocity. So velocity is speed with direction, so all positive velocities are moving in one direction, all negative velocities are moving in the other direction. So by looking at this blue function, I see that I was moving to the right at the beginning of my journey and at the end of my journey, but I was moving backwards in the middle of my journey. So that's just what those functions allow me to understand. I'm just taking a look. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Um, so right now I'm not gonna get through everything that I wanted to. Uh, so I just want to check what I'm assigning for homework and see what we're able to do with what we've done so far. Um, so if you just give me one moment. Okay, uh, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut down on the homework. Uh, the homework in online is one, four, seven, nine, eleven, 11, and 13. I am gonna get rid of number 11 and number 13. So I'm gonna go into the classroom now and make that adjustment. And then maybe tomorrow we can try those uh, because I know that things are getting laggy. Uh, 